The Lord be with you this, the, the Feast of St. James of Jerusalem, brother of our Lord and martyr. Uh, the order of service is divine service, setting three, found on page 184. And we begin with our opening hymn, By Grace I'm Saved, 566. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me not never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth, peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, shepherd of your people, you raised up James, the just, brother of our Lord, to lead and guide your church. Grant that we may follow his example of prayer and reconciliation and be strengthened by the witness of his death. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. first reading for the feast of St. James of Jerusalem, brother of, our, of Jesus and martyr, is written in the Acts of the Apostles, the 15th chapter. All the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, Listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return, and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will store, uh, restore it that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from from of old. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, 
and from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. From, for from ancient generations, Moses has had, or has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogues. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in St. James' letter to the church, the first chapter. James, a servant of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to you, given him. Let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, un unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich, the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Coming to his hometown, Jesus taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all of these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Imagine having Jesus, the Son of God, for your brother. James the Just, the Bishop of Jerusalem, didn't need to imagine. According to this pastor, he was the half-brother of our Lord, the son of Joseph and Mary. Now, historically, however, ever, even among us Lutherans, it has been long held that Mary had no other children. In fact, by a special gift of grace given to both Mary and Joseph, Mary remained a virgin till her death. Now, of course, if you hold to this, then that would mean that James could only be Jesus' stepbrother. Or, as others claim, James was Jesus' cousin, which is what the Roman Catholics do. Now, whether or not James was Jesus' half or stepbrother, he still had Jesus under the same roof as himself. For those who grew up in uh, a moderately sized house with more than a couple of siblings, it was not all that great to have that one sibling that was the goody two-shoes, especially when you were the one compared to that exemplar. For James, try as he might, he could never put those goody two-shoes on himself, let alone touch them. He was a sinner with an earthly father. James, or Jesus, on the other hand, had flesh and blood, yes, but that was because of his mother, Mary. His father, on the other hand, was from above. And he was perfect. Which made, then, Jesus perfect in every way. He was God in the flesh. In such a home, it is safe to assume that James, at least as a child resented Jesus with all his being. Nothing he could do would ever measure up. He would likely hear, why can't you be more like Jesus? Which is one of the cruelest forms of torture a brother or sister can be inflicted with by a parent or other authority. It's hard enough to be compared to another little sinner, but to be compared to the one who no one could ever be is just not fair. To add insult to injury, Jesus was not only the perfect son, he was the perfect brother. As angry and resentful as one got, Jesus never returned the favor. Instead, he loved him. He loved James even more, which were, as the apostle would later say elsewhere, would act as burning coals heaped upon his forehead. Every word and action directed towards Jesus was reciprocated with a turning of the other cheek. He probably even said to James, in his hearing, at least, Father, forgive him, for he knows not what he does. After Joseph dies, And everyone grows up and departs to start their own lives with their own families. What was felt and thought could have extended on into adulthood. Like Jacob and Esau, separated from by time and space, which gave opportunity for them to endlessly fight in each other's heads. And which led to a very tense reunion when Jacob returned from their uncle Laban's. That could have been shared by Jesus and James, but it wasn't. Their time apart seemed to produce different fruit. Jacob and Esau did reunite and did reconcile. Each had sinned against each other, but by God's grace, they forgave each other and were brothers in Christ again. The difference between James and Jesus is that all the sin was on James's side. Of the line. He was the, he was the angry and resentful one. But over time, something had happened. What happened was that the very one whom his flesh and blood had rebelled against so violently, he 
was the brother that James needed. Jesus was no mere brother. He was James's savior. In spite of all that came between Jesus and James, it never changed the fact that Jesus was his brother and that Jesus was his savior. His savior from the very sin that stood between the two of them. In perfect love, Jesus mended the divide, not by ignoring it, but by willingly and lovingly sacrificing himself for it. How many times did James wish in his own heart and head that Jesus would just die and be out of his life forever? Now, ironically, his prayers of evil and hate were heard. And like the high priest of Israel who wished Jesus dead and out of the way as a priest, he unwittingly did his job, the job assigned to him even by God. For when Jesus is crucified, as a priest, he was making sacrifice, the right sacrifice, the necessary one. The high priest would make sacrifice for the sake of the people, the once and for all sacrifice. When Jesus died, he died for James, too. He died for you. To hear and see that his brother was dead, and to see his mother have her heart pierced by the sword of having lost her firstborn son to the death of crucifixion, to see her son shamefully stripped, naked, and exposed for all to see as he died as the worst of criminals, was likely too much for him. And so it was that, like the other apostles, save John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, James ran away and hid with the rest. And because James was nowhere to be found, along with his other brothers, Jesus had to leave his mother to John's care. What was so hard to tolerate was meant to be hard and overwhelming for James. James was left to be as he actually was. He would need to learn that. He was a poor, miserable sinner. When he, had, when he was a lad and resented Jesus, it was because he would not let go of the lie. The lie that he was good, even just a little bit. And so when he was measured up to Jesus, he resented Jesus because he thought himself worthy. But now, now with the perfect brother dead and his prayer seeming to be answered, he was left with nothing. Nothing but his own sin. There was nothing to lay claim to that would save him. He was dust, dead in his trespasses and sins. When we look into the mirror that is Jesus, when the holy word of God shines its perfect light on us, and it exposes every spot, wrinkle, and every such thing, we who are called by God to be Jesus' brothers and sisters, well, we then so often act exactly like James did. We are not, at first, quick to embrace our brother. We rebel and resent him because we imagine that we are good, too, and that we don't need him. We imagine that he, if he were not around, our lives would be better. But these are the lies of our that our fallen flesh and mind believe from the evil foe. Because without Jesus, we would forever be lost, and salvation would never be for us. 
Jesus died and was buried. But he did not stay dead. Because he was the perfect son of God, the God-man in the flesh, his sacrifice was sufficient and acceptable to the Father in heaven. Our debt was paid in full by him, by him who, whom, we dis, we, whom we sinned against so grievously. James, the brother of our Lord, not only heard this news, most certainly he saw his brother in the flesh, that he was no longer dead, but alive. His sins did not outdo his brother's death. No, instead, Jesus' death outdid his and all our sin. And that news, that gospel, changed him. We are members of the family of God. We have been adopted into the family as James was. We are in the Lord's household. But let us not be like the unbelievers of this world. Rather, let us hear and believe that Jesus is our brother and our Savior. Let us not resent and reject him when and where he may be found. For he visits us in our hometowns, in our families. He visits us every Lord's Day. And every time his body and blood are revealed to be present according to his performative word. Jesus comes. And when he comes to town, as it were, let us receive him. Let us receive his perfect work, his forgiveness. Let us be made just as he is, which is to, in fact, be like Jesus, as everyone around us would have us be. How about you be like, more like Jesus? And Jesus makes us more like him. For by receiving and believing in him, he and all he has done for us is made ours. We are made perfect, like Jesus. James the just, like his brother Jesus, was unjustly executed for the sake of the gospel. He would not keep his mouth shut. And he was martyred in the most gruesome manner. In uh, 62 AD, according to Josephus, the historian, a group of offended Pharisees climbed the temple with him in hand as the people shouted, they reached the top and threw James from the pinnacle of the temple. But it didn't kill him. No, he rose to his knees and began to pray for them. I beg you, Lord God, our Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. This would not do. The Pharisees on the ground began to stone him as he prayed while those from the roof rushed down to join the execution. One of the priests, however, a son of, Rechabi uh, of the Rechabites, mentioned by Jeremiah the prophet in chapter 35, shouted, Stop! What are you doing? The righteous one is praying for you. It was too late. A fuller, a launderer, took out one of the clubs that he used to beat clothes and smashed James on the head, killing him with one blow. Blessed be St. James, the just, Bishop of Jerusalem and brother of our Lord Jesus. He is our brother in the faith. He is our example. Let us repent, be forgiven, and live trusting in our brother Jesus Christ, the Son of God, or with James, we will indeed meet him again in the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen.
We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding to the hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. In our prayers this evening, we remember Pastor Richard Gaub, who has been extended a call uh, to be associate pastor here at St. John's, as well as headmaster to Lutheran Classical Academy. Uh, we pray that his deliberation in this, uh, of this solemn call uh, would go well. We pray also for his current congregation and school, St. Paul's in Coleman, Alabama. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your holy church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us. And enable, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are entirely given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors, to those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, having prayed for your guidance, we have chosen a headmaster and associate pastor to serve St. John's and Lutheran Classical Academy. May the choice of your people please you. Guide, and deliver, uh, guide the deliberation of Pastor Richard Gaub with your Holy Spirit, that he may desire to do your will and be ready to serve where needed in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity, Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the schools of the church and all colleges, universities, and centers of research and those who teach and work in them. Especially do we remember our own school, Lutheran Classical Academy. Grant your wisdom in such measure that the people that will come and serve this school may serve you honorably in church and state, and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. 
by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Lynn Flint, David, uh, uh, Dale Rissmeyer, Stephanie Martins, Arthur Campbell, Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. And bring consolation to those in sorrow. And grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church honor, who now rest from their labors. Especially do we remember St. James, the brother of our Lord. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for you have mightily governed and protected your holy church, in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaimed your divine and saving gospel. Therefore, with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with your servant, St. James, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Body of Christ, give it to you. Body of Christ, give it to you. The 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 
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come, depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Thank you.
be seated. Blessings to you again this evening. Uh, just one thing before we go. I forgot to read this on Sunday, and I'll read it this coming Sunday, now that it's printed out. Uh, is the letter from Pastor Gaub, uh, just uh, greeting you and um, letting you know that he got the call papers. So, uh, it, uh, Pastor Gaub writes, Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be informed that I have received a divine call to serve the people of St. John's Lutheran Church and Cla Lutheran Classical Academy in Port Washington, Wisconsin, as associate pastor and headmaster. I am committed to pr prayerfully consider this call, as well as the call I have to serve here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church and School. I ask your continued prayers for my family and me, and also the congregation and schools of St. Paul's and St. John's. I look forward to any discussion and counsel you wish to offer during this time of deliberation. Your servant in Christ, Richard, uh, Pastor Richard M. Gaub. So we continue to keep him his prayers. I'll be talking to him some more tomorrow to kind of hammer down some dates uh, for his visit. So uh, he will only be coming solo, though. His wife still needs to stay back and treat. He did reassure me that is no sign to a decision. So. Uh, it doesn't weigh one way or the other. So we continue to keep him in our prayers, as well as I mentioned St. Paul's. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit on Sunday at the Bible study. Uh, he currently has two calls, as he mentioned in his letter. He has the call that he currently has at St. Paul's as headmaster and, and, and associate pastor there, and he has our call. Now he gets to decide which one he wants to keep, uh, because he can't keep both. Um, so, uh, so we keep, continue to pray for that and for all involved. God's peace, and may he keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.